All right. So, uh, what is this? Is it technically it is one of the lockdown projects. Uh, so you may ask why anybody needs yet another kind of a diary application. Uh, my particular use case, I don't mean to say that this is the only use case for the application, obviously there might be many, many more, but I wanted to track uh, things related to my uh, personal well-being, like literally what I ate, how I slept, uh, what was the outcome the next day, uh, was I productive or was I not? And um, obviously it is uh, nothing super uh, security critical, right? But still it's uh, you know, lots of details about you personally and you uh, probably don't want like, Google, any third party application vendors uh, or insurance companies to whom they can resell this data know about this, right? And uh, also uh, it is uh, uh, purely personal thing. So uh, you don't want to normally to share such things with your friends and it's not like the weight loss tracking application when you boast about every kg you lost, right? It's all very, uh, for your eyes only. Uh, so I did a little bit of research and found that there is nothing really on the market. And a vast majority of such applications, unfortunately, are online. And online has certain implications that somebody pays for the infrastructure and they uh, somehow put the cost on you either by bothering you with uh, meaningless advertisement or in the worst case, by uh, doing some data mining on the data you uh, submit there. And uh, for me in particular, because I also do, or rather I did, and hopefully we'll do a bit of traveling in uh, parts of the world where mobile coverage is not so good. It, it was important to be able to uh, work with the application entirely off the grid. That is, you shouldn't need anything other than your mobile. So uh, I didn't find anything suitable. Decided to write my own one. Again, uh, some spare time during the lockdown, etc., etc. Uh, for the platform, obviously, the choice was Android because it is much more friendly to deal with. Uh, development tools are free. And uh, also, it uh, would be easier to use for many people around the globe if anybody wants to use it because it requires very, very basic functionality from your smartphone. It works on anything starting from Android 4.4, which is almost non existent by now. Uh, so yeah, that's why I decided to spend some time and make my own one. Uh, I apologize, I cannot figure out how to maximize my slides here. So we probably will have to leave with a small view. So uh, now important statement on any kind of security applications on the smartphones. There's no such thing as security on the smartphone. If any data can uh, get you in any kind of serious trouble, keep this data and your smartphone as far away from each other as possible. And also there's no such thing as social and secure at the same time. It's just as a general warning. So uh, talking about security, obviously we cannot protect from everything. We need to be clear about what is our threat model, what we are taken seriously and what we just ignore. So what I wanted to protect myself from is uh, most of all indiscriminate data mining but by whoever parties uh, uh, might be in control of my phone that is uh, Google with Android uh, or any other applications is stored on the phone uh, or uh, Another important case, if uh, somebody gets hold of your phone and wants to read what you wrote in your super duper secret diary. Obviously, uh, we are not even trying to protect from any professional actors targeting you specifically. So again, as I said, there are no real secrets on mobile device, just by definition. So uh, 
next question, obviously, is how do we uh, achieve all, all these things? But before, uh, in the true spirit of open uh, source software, we want everything to be verifiable. So the source is available on uh, GitHub. There is a link in the end. And um, for Android applications specifically, uh, it, it is also a good practice to check what permissions this application is asking for. So this application asks only for location permission and even this is an option which uh, you need to turn on if you want to geotag your records in addition to timestamping them. So it does not have any network permission at all. It allows you to share uh, records from your diary if you want to via the standard Android uh, sharing mechanism. But the component which actually will be uh, doing the sharing will be something else. The application does not have any permissions to leak your data anywhere. Uh, now for the technical implementation. Uh, for uh, storing the data, uh, I chose to use uh, a SQLite database, which uh, resides in a space which is uh, private for your applications. That is uh, provided Android is working normally and uh, does what it should do. No other application ever should be able to access this database on your application and Android itself, obviously. So since uh, I personally don't trust Google much as well, so I, I want uh, the data to be encrypted at rest. And uh, the easiest approach uh, seems to be to encrypt the specific text field in text fields in the database. And uh, the database itself is actually very simple. It consists of records and also you can tag records. So there are uh, only two text fields, the record itself and the tag. These are encrypted. Uh, the encryption is uh, AIS encryption uh, provided by Android. Uh, by modern uh, standards, uh, it, well, you probably don't want to expose it to the whole world and uh, use the latest and greatest hardware and uh, try to decipher it. But for the threat model described previously, uh, this seems to be sufficient. Uh, a few more bits and pieces. Uh, as you know, uh, when you have multiple applications running on your uh, mobile device, when you swipe uh, between the applications, you can see the screenshot what your application was uh, showing. Uh, luckily, there is a special uh, flag in Android application, which is typically used in, say, uh, online banking applications, which does not allow your screenshot to be displayed in this situation, and which also prohibits anybody from taking screenshots from your application in general. Uh, another useful feature, obviously, would be uh, login timeout, that is, uh, uh, once you enter your password, you can read your uh, records and add new records. After some time of inactivity, it times out and you need to explicitly unlock it. Uh, uh, last but not least, uh, uh, everybody wants to have some backup copy or maybe you even want uh, to do some analysis on your diary records later. So you want to be able to still get out uh, all the data out of your secret diary for further processing. And uh, it seems that the most secure way to do this is to assemble it all inside your application in a password protected zip file. Again, this is a standard zip encryption, which is probably uh, not super duper strong by modern standards, but uh, still it's good enough and does the job. And then once the zip file is generated, you can share it via any uh, mechanism available on your phone. And uh, uh, the 
probably one of the more secure ways would be uh, directly share it via Bluetooth to your trusted device, be it your laptop or whatever else. And there on your laptop, you will need to obviously to enter the same password to decrypt the zip file and get the content, which can be uh, either a text file or a JSON file for any kind of fancy processing. And um, as I already mentioned, any sharing of the data outside of application is only uh, technically possible by user's deliberate action by sharing this encrypted zip file with backup or by manually sharing a single record using the Android uh, uh, standard sharing mechanism. Uh, one other little note is that uh, if you are seriously, seriously paranoid, you probably uh, don't want to trust on screen keyboard as well, because as we all know, it learns from what you type and uh, the exact details about how it learns and, and where the data goes, uh, they are not very well publicized. So if you want your diary to be even more secure, you might wish to use an external keyboard, either a USB, standard USB keyboard, which uh, work with, uh, I think, any Android device now just as normal cable keyboard or slightly less secure Bluetooth. Uh, so for the demo, unfortunately, I won't be able to do this because the tiny laptop I'm sitting on now is unable to run the emulator at the same time. But there is a link in the end so you can just install the application or build it from source and try it for yourself. So as I said, the application is very simple. You create the record. Uh, it is timestamped, it is optionally geotagged, and you can add your arbitrary tags to this record, which uh, allows you to have a nice cross section, like if this record is related to, say, sleep quality. The uh, next time, by clicking on this tag, you will bring up all records which are related to your sleep quality, for instance. And uh, last but not least, here is a link to the application in Google Play Store. And here is the link to the sources. And uh, if uh, anybody has uh, any interesting proposals or any other interesting use cases, uh, GitHub uh, gives a good way to communicate any such things. And uh, whenever I have time, I'm happy to bring it forward and do something more about it. In its current form, it pretty much suits uh, uh, most of uh, the needs I developed it for, but if it is useful for anybody else for anything else, just give me a shout. And uh, that's pretty much it for my application. Any questions, any feedback, anything? Does this work can uh, can can stretch to the more recent uh, Android thing? No, because four point four is I have no idea uh, what is the latest. But does this actually work the same in in the newer one? Uh, yeah. So uh, it works on anything uh, from four point four and above. Uh, the phone I'm running it on now, I believe it runs Android 11. And uh, uh, just let me double check. I think it's 11. Uh, just, uh, uh, sorry, 10. So it definitely runs on Android 10. But there's uh, no super fancy functionality, uh, which I would expect to change from one major release of Android to another. So don't think there might be any breaking changes with the newer versions. Oh, I tried uh, as much as possible to avoid anything non-standard. Oh, I, actually, I have one thing. I think I think when you plug in a USB keyboard, it also still goes through the uh, the keyboard software on Android, if I remember correctly. 
Uh, this might depend on your particular phone model yeah, and yeah, uh, settings phone. because some they are still uh, you can enable all these fancy predictions and learning even uh, with manual keyboard but i believe that by default it is uh, turned off or at least it's definitely turned off on my phone but the more physical it is the less of an application it is the more secure it is from data gathering potentially at least this is the hope okay thanks i had a comment on the uh encryption of a zip file uh, you, yeah you suggested that it wasn't uh, necessarily all that great um I, I think you're perhaps underestimating so the the complication this is a the nice thing about standards is that there are so many to choose from situation. There are at least three, possibly four or five encryption systems in use in zip files, in particular PKWare and WinZip. Uh, didn't see eye to eye for a number of years. But AES has AES256 has been standardized for years and is will open on just about everything. And so long as you specify it at the time you encrypt it as AES256, you've then got something that is uh, authorized or certified by most governments for anything up to secret level classification. So it's pretty bloody solid. The problem that you've got, as ever, is the key management, not the encryption algorithm. And that, then it doesn't matter what software you're using. You've got the, that's the bigger problem. Uh, yeah, well, I'm just being uh, generally cautious of, with such statements uh, when quantum computers are somewhere just around the corner. And the thing is that in Android, in, at least in the library I used for zip, uh, there's uh, no uh, way to explicitly specify the encryption parameters. And also, if you uh, try to do something uh, uh, non-standard there, chances are that on your particular uh, machine and your particular version of zip, it might be uh, unable to decrypt itself. Uh, so is, I okay. use the standard if, option. If you can't specify, then you, you, of course you have a problem, but it's uh, AS256 is, it's been part of the standard for a long time. So it's, it's something that should work on just about every implementation. But sure, uh, I mean, yeah, and, uh, yeah. Encryption in the database and the encryption of a zip file are obviously different. Yes. All right, any more questions? Uh, if you have any questions, you can ask them, Alex, now. Um, yeah. So I just posted the uh, slide deck on uh, Facebook group if you're interested. That's great. Thanks. All right. Thank you. I think that'll be it. So that's it for all the talks today. Uh, I think we'll have, we have some time to mingle. Uh, so, yep, this room will remain open. Sayani? So,